praise the Lord once more. I want us to do a declaration just as you are. Then we shall flow together. You can stand up. Let's go together. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. You can have your seats. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once more. I thank God for you for turning up today. Uh, it is the gracious hand of God. I hereby with you thank the Almighty God for giving us another opportunity to live, that we may worship Him. And we pray that He will help us to worship Him in truth and in spirit. I'm going to speak a word in Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 1 and chapter 2. The title of my, the word that the Lord has given me tonight is the gracious end of God. The gracious end of God. I'm going to touch both chapters 1 and 2. And my main verse will be chapter 2 and verse 8. I will paraphrase chapter 1 as I flow to chapter 2. The words of Nehemiah, son of Echaliah, in the month of Islef, in the 20th year, while I was in citadel of Susa, verse 2. Anani, Anani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnants that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. This is Nehemiah speaking. Nehemiah was a cupbearer. A cupbearer. I think a cupbearer is an house help. Because he used to serve the king. He was mainly located, his section of work was in the kitchen. So his work was like washing utensils and serving the king wine. That was the job description of Nehemiah. He had left uh, Jerusalem and he was working for the king far away. When he was working far away for the king, he met some of his brothers, Anan, as we've seen in verse 2. And he was concerned about his homeland, Jerusalem. And when they came to him, they gave him some information of what was happening. I can call it his homeland. Then Anan and some other brethren, they told Nehemiah that the situation is very bad in Jerusalem. What was the situation? They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province in great trouble and disgrace. The situation was, the walls of Jerusalem were brought down. And when they were brought down, the gates were brought down and burnt. This was bad news, horrible, not pleasing. There is nothing hard like receiving bad news when you are far away from your home. This thing, these words hit Nehemiah so hard in his heart. You know, there are words that hit people in the heart. It hits him so hard in the heart. And he found a solution in God. Let's see verse 4. The Bible says, when he received this bad news, he purposed in his heart. The only solution that he had was to pray and fast. I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. That was the immediate thing that he saw. He did not think of 
going to discuss with his colleagues. He did not think of uh, other solutions, but first he thought of prayer and fasting. Remember, he was working in the palace, so he had access of the king. He had access of authority. He could have told the king to go and sort them out, and they would have gone. But the first thing that came to his mind was, the only thing that I can do between all things is to fast and pray. Then he said, now from verse 5 to the last verse, is the prayer that he prayed. He really prayed a long prayer. All those verses are prayers. O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and wholesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you. Day and night for your servants. He was praying day and night. When I was studying, I found he prayed for four months before he faced the king. I learned consistency in prayer. When this news come, it's good we resort to an ideal solution that can help us. Just as Nehemiah, he resorted in prayer and fasting. Four months. This is what he was praying. We need to be consistent in prayer in all times, in all situations of life. That's what I learned from there. When he was praying, he allowed the will of God to be done. Then I saw Jesus in Luke chapter 22, verse 41 and 42. When Jesus was saying, let this cup pass, then in the other verse, verse 42, he withdrew about a stone, he went away. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. So it's like he wanted it to be taken away. Yet not my will, but your will be done. When Nehemiah was praying, he was seeking the will of God to be done for his people who were suffering in Jerusalem. It was a dire situation because there were no protection. The wall was down. The gates were burned. Tobias and Sanballat kind were mockering with a lot of reproach. They were laughing at the remnants in Jerusalem. It was really bad. It was hitting so much in Nehemiah's life. But what Nehemiah sought was the will of God to be done. Just as Jesus. Then I correlated it with today's life. There are many issues in today's life. We can resort very fast in prayer. It does not cost us anything but to pray. The only cost is it is hard work. Prayer is hard work. I have come to find one of the hard work to do under the sun is prayer. So we just need to work hard. That's the only cost that we need. In this prayer that he was praying, he needed clarity and understanding. We will see it as we continue. Then, let's go. Uh, let's go back to Nehemiah chapter 1. It's in prayer we receive solution, clarity, and understanding. We receive clarity and understanding in all realms that we live. And that's what Nehemiah was seeking. He was seeking a clarity and to understand on how to handle the situation in Jerusalem. Then I say, when we pray consistently and hard working, we will receive clarity and understanding. Nehemiah took his sorrow to the Lord in prayer about the situation in Jerusalem. We can say Nehemiah used his power 
to persuade the king or to meet the king but not really so from there to the hand verse of Nehemiah chapter 1 it was just prayer he was praying for his people there is need to have a burden of the work of God that he has placed in our hands there is need to have a burden of our people there's prayer and prayer I pray I tell God help my father's house and my mother's house I also pray expose every wickedness I had Bishop pray so and they expose every wickedness why so that the will of God will be realized it's good as Christians you feel the burden of your people and that's what Nehemiah had he was looking for clarity and understanding to find a solution to help the people of Jerusalem let's go to chapter 2 chapter 2 now in chapter 2 after Nehemiah had prayed in the king's palace there was a lot there were a lot of servants who are working now it came for a turn of Nehemiah to go and serve the king God will always provide an opportunity for us to be helped of him when we pray consistently when we have a burden and work on it God will provide an opportunity for him to help us in this month when wine was brought for him for the king I took the wine and gave it to the king I had not been sent in his presence before the next verse when he came now to serve the king he, he was still unwell he was still affected by the situation that had happened he had prayed and waited for the will of God to be done now here he is serving the king he saw an opportunity you know a stressed person is a stressed person you cannot pretend when you are stressed we will see even if you pretend we will see the king saw this is not the Nehemiah that usually serves me he saw him he was sad then he asked him why does your face look so sad when you are not here this can be nothing but sadness of heart it's true he was affected in the heart I was very much afraid he was very much afraid the next verse we can see in the next verse but the, I say to the king may the king live forever why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire you know we were told this grace makes us to be sober this man was sober because he was being affected over what was happening if you live in the Lord if you walk in righteousness when things are happening you will be sober and you can sense what is happening then the king said to me what is it you want then I pray to God of heaven it's always good before you respond to situations you seek counsel from above he sought for a reply for a rejoinder from heaven and I answered the king if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in his sight let him send to me the city in Judah where my fathers are buried so that I can rebuild it now he is speaking out was what had made him sad the news that he had received from Anani and the brethren so I'll paraphrase then go to verse 8 so he tells the king he was sad because of what was happening in Jerusalem then the king asked him what to do he sought before he answered the king he sought from the Lord on what to speak uh, when he sought from the Lord on what to speak the Bible says that the king granted him his requests let's see verse 8 
And when he sought, he was seeking for an off or a leave to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the city. The city. Number two, he was seeking for some help in terms of resources to go and build the city with. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was granted this. And may I have a letter to us up. So he also to reach Jerusalem was not easy. There were some kingdoms and enemies. So he sought for passes which will help him to pass and reach Jerusalem. Number one, he sought for resources. Number two, he sought for a pass. And number three, he sought for security. Now, blessed be the name of the Lord. There is results in waiting upon the Lord. What did the king grant him? The king granted him letters to pass through to Jerusalem. The king granted him resources, timber for building, and the king added him security. When we were doing our declarations at the end of the year, one of our declarations is that God will give you new connections. God will give you, uh, 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 will, will connect you with people who will help you. He was even given horses and men to go with him. Then he even testified in verse 8. And may I have a letter to Asap, keep out the king's forest, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was upon me, the king granted my request. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This happened because the gracious end of his God was upon him. You see, he was even given a bonus of whatever he asked. We can read and see what he had asked. You can go to verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7. Go back to verse 7. Uh, I said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of trans you prayed so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. Verse 8. And may have a letter. Yeah, we've seen that. Verse 9. So I went to the governor of, of trans you prayed and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. That's a bonus. This gracious end of God is, is, it cannot be understood. Then I said in my notes, it's undeserved favor. It cannot be hunt. It's freely given. We are all candidates of this gracious end of God. Blessed be us who in this year, we are under the great grace. I just came today to tell someone listening that the gracious end of God is more than able to address all our life. It's more than able. I've even forgot my notes where I am. So we have hope of life. Because we are living under this gracious end of God. When you look back over your life, you can see many things that the gracious end of God has done to you. When you are looking to be married, the man that you saw you are with is the gracious end of God. The livelihood that you are earning is the gracious end of God. The health that you have when you are sick and you are healed, it was the gracious end of God. 
then I came to tell you there is even hope. This gracious end of God is still at work. He is the same God who was, who is, and who is to come. God of Nehemiah is our God. And by his gracious end, he is going to sort it out. We can see in verse 18, he even gave a testimony when he went back to Jerusalem. He went and did some pre-visit of how the place was in Israel, how it was ruined. Then he came and met the men and told them, now we have to start the work. Let's see verse 18. Then they were not so sure, certain, if it will be done. Then he is telling them, let us start building. I also told them about the gracious end of my God upon me. And what the king had said to me, they replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I read the, the, the verses ahead and saw some wicked people, Tobias and Sanbalat, they came mocking them. Telling them at you kuta enye mejenga, it inezangusha na fox even. But by the end of the day, it is stood. I also read that that war was supposed to take a year, and because the gracious end of God was with them, it took 52 days. There is something in this grace. What is it in this grace? There is something in this grace that is abnormal and out of human logic. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then I came to tell you, if God was able to show his grace upon you, he is also able to do it more. Psalms 124, verse 1 to verse 8. These are some of the hearts of the gracious end of God. If the Lord had not been our side, then we say, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when men attacked us, when their hunger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord. Who has not let us to be torn by their teeth? Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have escaped like a bird out of the fowler snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. This is the wax of the gracious end of God. This is what was happening in Jerusalem after Nehemiah had waited upon the Lord. And he received clarity and understanding to go back and do what the Lord had told him. This is favor from the Lord. How did you get to where you are? It is the gracious end of God. Psalms 44 verse 3. It is God. It was not by their sword that they, are, they won the land. Nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face. For you loved them. It was the gracious end of God. Yes, it may look like a big wall. Like a big wall, mountain. Zechariah 4, 6 tells us, Who are you, thou great mountain? you shall become plain not by power but by my spirit says the Lord it doesn't matter how it is the, when the gracious end of God is upon our lives we shall make it in life I'm about to close I've not even read my point God opening the door God bringing right people in our realms at work in our lives it is gracious end it's an added advantage to understand this 
therefore we cannot be intimidated because we don't walk alone there is some grace accompanying us which we've not had we've been told that Paul was saying that he has labored more than hope then he goes at the hand and says it's just by grace so it's by this grace that we can make it it's an under advantage that we have we need to rise up in boldness with confidence and pursue what God has placed in our hearts just like this man Nehemiah did Psalms 3:3 tells me that God is able to do it because he's the lifter of our heads he can lift us he can lift us in correlation to this grace what happened because his gracious end was with him we've seen what has happened to Nehemiah we need to speak if God's gracious end is in with us you see when he was being challenged if you will make it he told them the gracious end was end of God was with us we need to speak it out when these things come the gracious end is with me is it death is it a house i need is it uh, uh uh needs that i have the gracious end of god is able to sort it out blessed be the name of the lord so we are not in a position to say that the walls are big no by the gracious end of god we can make it therefore today i tell you when the gracious end of god is upon you no weapon fashion against you can prevail when the gracious end of god is upon you you will just prevail because the great grace is in place blessed be the name of the lord father we thank you and we worship you we glorify your name because of your word help us dear lord that we will have bind to see this works in our lives may your gracious end be upon our own lives our own families our ministry even this nation father we thank you because you are faithful in jesus name we pray amen